Pompeians tell a story about how the mangrove forests helped build their islands. The Pompeians tell the story about how the, their island was first formed. They said that uh, when they first came, there was no land. When people first came to Pompeii, there was no land. They found a piece of coral sticking up off the sea surface. They added rocks to the coral and built an altar. They added soil and planted mangroves to protect the shoreline. They called the mangroves Kachanganyar, meaning the one that holds the shore. Finally, the island was encircled by a ring of mangroves and topped by green forests. It was big enough for people to live on. Mangroves protect and enrich the high Carolinian islands where people live. Mangroves are a buffer along the shoreline to protect soil and houses from storm winds. The drooping branches help to break the force of the waves. Rain and streams carry sediment to the shore. Mangrove forests catch sediment and help keep it from washing onto the seagrass beds and coral reefs. Island populations are growing and investors are starting more businesses. Most development is along the shoreline. Land by the shore is so valuable that many mangrove swamps are filled for homes and businesses. Governments often build roads in the mangroves because they cannot easily buy private lands in the uplands. But we must be careful that in developing our islands, we do not destroy the forests that protect them. Mangroves are adapted to live along the shore. Each tree depends on the mix of salty and fresh water where it grows. Some trees, like nipa, need fresher water. Mangrove roots need oxygen, just as people need to breathe. It's hard for the roots to get oxygen in standing water. The roots have nematophores that reach into the air to get all the oxygen they can. On the surface of stilt roots and nematophores, some holes called lenticels help take oxygen in from the air. Anything that changes how water flows into and around the mangroves affect the mangroves. Often freshwater seeps from the uplands into mangrove forests. If a road along the shore blocks the fresh water, the mangrove swamps become more salty. The branches begin to lose leaves and the mangroves slowly die. Rain washes sediment from unfinished or poorly constructed roads and filled areas. Too much sediment buries nematophores and keeps mangroves from getting enough oxygen. Without oxygen, the roots and trees die. A causeway across the mouth of a bay will reduce the amount of seawater coming into the bay with each tide. Flowing water carries oxygen. This causeway in Ngatbang, Palau, cut off seawater circulation. There wasn't enough oxygen in the bay and all the mangroves died. When mangroves are lost, the shoreline is eroded by storms and tides. Sometimes expensive seawalls must be built. If not built properly, seawalls may cause nearby shores to erode or they may wash away themselves. If mangroves are removed, sediment from rivers and shores is swept onto the seagrass beds and reefs. Corals cannot live in muddy water or when covered with sand. 
oil spills coat the surfaces of roots and keep them from getting the oxygen they need. This often kills young trees quickly. The oil also poisons the soil and other trees later die. Mangroves are often filled with garbage. Water flowing through mangrove dumps carries toxic chemicals to the reefs. What are the solutions? Avoid oil spills. Don't dump trash in mangroves. Construct landfills for garbage in dry ground. Line the landfills with clay or plastic to keep most chemicals from leaking. Avoid building roads in the mangroves. Plan roads carefully. Choose good locations. Roads on firm, dry soil will last longer and will cost less to maintain than roads in mangroves. Try not to build roads in the mangroves. Instead, follow gentle terrain in the uplands. Don't change water flow in the mangroves. Look for small seeps, channels, and tidal currents. Don't impound or divert streams. Put culverts and bridges wherever water is moving. Make sure they are big enough for unusually large storms. Using plenty of large culverts will help keep roads from washing out in storms. It is cheaper to put in culverts than to try to fix the road later. Control erosion and sediment. Incomplete roads cause much more erosion than completed roads. Build one section of a road at a time. Complete that section before starting the next one. That way, the unfinished areas exposed to each rainstorm will be short. When filling in mangroves, Build a rock wall at the boundary first, or use rock reinforcements or sediment traps to keep fill from being washed away. Don't cut along shores or river banks. Leave the mangroves along the fringe of the ocean and along rivers. If it is necessary to fill, it is less harmful on the landward side of mangrove forests. Each fill site may be small. But if there are too many field sites, a large proportion of the forest is lost. Sometimes forest loss happens slowly and people don't notice unless the old men remind them how much forest there used to be or how many fish there used to be. On some islands, landowners make their own decisions about the mangroves. Even so, the whole community can educate itself about how the decisions of individuals affect the whole island. Setting aside mangrove reserves and replanting damaged areas can help compensate for forest removed in urban areas. Island citizens can work with political leaders, foresters, environmental protection agents and public works to make wise decisions and plan the future of our islands. We should all participate in environmental assessment and permitting processes. Micronesia's mangroves are some of the best in the world because Micronesians have lived with and respected mangroves for hundreds of years. As Micronesia develops, we can continue to show the world how to care for mangroves. Let the fire, 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 let the fire